Come again, though. Hey, look here. The metal's cracked. Could have blown up in my face. All right, Tom. One more failure, like the rotted kegs of powder. The rancid pork, the dried up seeds, the mildewed flour. And axes that shatter as they strike the tree. And all supplied by the same London merchant, Daniel Peters. I'll have harsh words to say about him when Captain Drake returns. If he returns. Sir Francis will not fail us, and neither will the Queen. Just the same, Parson. I hope you'll say a prayer or two. With proper food and arms, we could hold out here for months. But as things are, if Drake doesn't come before the autumn storms break, then the colony of Virginia is lost. <laughs> And therefore, Your Majesty, I submit, we must face the desolate truth that the colony of Virginia has been a disastrous failure. Drake and his crony, Walter Raleigh, persuaded my friends and me to invest a vast fortune in this Virginian venture. And in four years, what has been the return? A few small pearls, skins, some fruit, and weird, useless vegetables with the oddest names. Tobacco, potatoes. This, it seems, is a potato. Your Majesty. Where is the gold they promised? The precious stones? Your Majesty, Master Peters was promised one fifth part of all precious metals, if any were found. So far, none have been. Indeed, none have. But, but the richest is land is not the one that yields the most gold. It's the one that feeds the most men. What a sorry thing it is when Englishmen come to think like Spaniards and see no other wealth in the new world but gold and gems. Captain Drake, what other wealth is there in Virginia? Soil. Well, a wonderful fertility. Grapes and all manner of fruits in marvelous abundance. And two crops of corn can be gathered in one year. Two crops in one year, I find that hard. And inland, great stretches of cedar forest. Fine grazing lands where huge herds of wild ox abound. Wild ox, Your Majesty. What These are the true riches ox. to be won in the West. When? How long will it take? Why do you not admit that the northern continent of America is untamable wilderness, inhabited by savages. It is nothing of the Your kind. Your own settlers can't even support themselves. They need time. First, they must clear the land. They've had a bad winter. So have I, the money that I've You lost. will be repaid. Great profits will accrue not merely to individuals, but to the whole nation. Your Majesty, if I may speak a word. Yes, Mr. Secretary. Captain Drake, your friend Walter Raleigh founded this colony. True, my lord, and invested his own fortune with it. And why is he not here now to speak for it? He has military duties, sir. He is inspecting our coastal defenses. Just so. We cannot concern ourselves about the future of Virginia when the future of England herself is at stake. That is true, Your Majesty. With it's each month important. that passes, we hear more about this great armada that Spain is building to send against us. We can spare no money, no ships, no men, for a small community no, thousands no, of miles no. away. They are needed to guard our own no, shores. Oh, no. It will be many months before the Armada can put to sea. Meanwhile, we must continue to oppose Spain everywhere. Or are we to accept King Philip's arrogant assumption that Spain has exclusive rights to the entire Western world? But it is not simply a matter Apart of from all this, a brave little band of settlers of 89 men, 17 women, and 11 children may well die if they don't get supplies and arms before winter sets in. Your Majesty, do not listen. He, he exaggerates conditions in order to, to extract more money from us. That is not true. My guild enjoys your royal protection. We ask that Your Majesty forbids any further expenditure in this Virginian venture until we have been repaid in full. You are within your rights, Master Peters. Captain Drake, you are to borrow no more until the colony's debts are discharged. <laughs> If they don't get supplies, they'll perish? It is true, Your Majesty. Eighty-nine men. Seventeen women and eleven children. You 
Can't borrow any more. But I can make you a gift out of my private purse. Enough to furnish two supply ships. Go to them, Captain, and give them all the aid in your power. I will, madam. We sail tomorrow. How so? You mean you had the ships already? Fully provisioned and crewed. A flyboat in the Golden Hind awaiting at Tilbury. It only remains for me to settle the bills. How did you know that I would give you the money? Oh, I, uh, I, uh... You pirate. Aye, madam. <laughs> And you say the Queen sent for Drake afterwards? Yes, Lord Excellency. I see. It's possible she has given him the money after all. How long was he with her? Oh, just a few minutes, Excellency. Then he rode off for Tilbury. Tilbury? Yes, Tilbury. Where eight days ago a supply ship was chartered and orders given for cargoes of food and arms. Dracons, this pirate! He would have sailed already. But not far, sir. Cumbersome vessels, those old tubs. Easy prey. Yes, that's true. Admiral Valdez has got three fast galleons off the west coast of Ireland. Here. If we could get word to him through the port of Cork. Give me the letter, sir. I'll see that it gets to Cork. Good. At all costs, Spain wants this Virginian venture to be a complete failure. So that never again will any Englishman even dare to think of trying to live in the new world. With a fair wind and soft summer sea, we cleared the estuary and set course westward for Virginia. With us was the supply ship, the Daisy, loaded with the foods and goods the settlers needed, commanded by Davy Preston, who had served as one of my officers on previous voyages to the West. Captain, how far is Virginia? Well over 3,000 miles, John. How long will it take us? At the very least, three months. That craft is heavy laden, slow, unwieldy. And unarmed. Aye. This is one time we don't want to run into a Spanish squadron. Smollett, an old friend of mine. So you remember me, Captain? Well, so you should. You were a guest at my father's house more than once. <laughs> That's a few years gone. You've grown up somewhat. This is Len Smollett's girl. Len Smollett? Sail with you, Captain. 
called himself a master gunner. What do you I... mean, called himself? Yes, yes, one of the finest gunners I've ever had. Style of his own, mind you. Better than mine. Oh, uh, well, a uh, different. This numbskull calls himself a gunner? <laughs> I could outshoot him myself. My father taught me, you know. He died a month ago. I'm sorry, Lance. Now I'm on my own. All I want to do is to get to Virginia. And why do you want to get to Virginia, of all places? Because Tom Brewster's out there. He was a cabin boy on the Mercury. We grew up together aboard ship. I promised I'd wed him one day. I want to earn my way. I can work as well as any man. And if you're in short of a gunner... Thanks. But now you're here, you'll travel as a lady. And that's an order. Aye, Captain. And if you look through some of those chests we're taking out to the settler women, no doubt you'll find an outfit more befitting a bride to be. One chance this time, lass. You gotta silence all their cannons in one broadside. We'll do it. You got fine gunners, Martin. Stand by, lads. Now. Now, lass. Fire! Fire! Looks to the 
she's on fire. And she's lost her main mast. Fierce storms hit us as we neared the new world, and the daisy, crippled by the Spaniards, was abandoned. Mercifully, Davy Preston and most of his brave crew reached the hind, but we'd lost her priceless cargo. Helplessly, we stood by and watched the daisy dash against the cruel coast. Jenny Smallett. Aye, aye, Captain. Tell me, how did this trouble with the Indians begin? We gave them a few arms, some powder and shots, so they could hunt like us. But the arms were defective. One gun blew up. Chief son was blinded. Master Daniels wears, no doubt. And the other goods he supplied are no better. I've prepared a report of the failures. Thank you, Parson. The Queen shall see it. Have you lost many men? Only seven. And nine wounded. Governor Walters, Her Majesty charged me to do everything possible to help the people of this colony. As her representative, I must make the decision about who returns to England in my ship. We will unload everything from the Golden Heim but the barest necessities, and I will leave only a skeleton crew under the command of Master Trevelyan. Then there should be room for all of you. The rest of my men and I will establish a garrison here. You and your men will take our places. Aye, the Queen will not forsake us. She will dispatch Master Trevelyan by return with fresh supplies. But that'll be for six, seven months at least. Even with the stores you bring ashore, you'll never last the winter. Less than a hundred miles along the coast, the Daisy went aground. I'll take a party and search for her. If she's intact, we'll have supplies and arms aplenty. You'll never get that far, Captain. You don't know this country. The Indians are everywhere. It is settled, gentlemen. You will have your people dressed and ready to embark at dawn tomorrow. Very well, Captain. Well, there's no reason why what remains of today shouldn't be merry. Is Tom Brewster here? We've got something for you, lad. Dressed up like a like a bride. Yeah. What you mean? You mean dearly beloved. We are gathered here together in the sight of the Lord. It's not right. Captain Drake and his men are as good as giving their lives for us. They don't know this country. They don't know the Indians. We do not want to leave this land, Mr. Seaton. 
You know that. What else can we do? We'll tell you what you can do. If you're the kind of people I think you are, and that I want to make my neighbors, there's only one thing left to do. Mr. Preston! Captain? Trevelyan, John! Hello. Where is everyone? Have they gone? That seems. Hey, look, Captain. Well, where are the others? They left two hours ago, sir. Left? To try to reach the wreck of the supply ship down the coast. I am to give you a message from Governor Walters. I'm listening. I am to thank you, Captain Drake for everything that you and your brave men try to do for us. But rather than abandon this colony, the people voted to make this last attempt. What have they done? Governor Walters said that if men in England learned we'd given up here, no more would come to this land. His very words were, tell them that we grew so to love it, we elected to remain until the end. Shall I go after him, Captain, bring him back? No, they've made that decision. We'll go back and make sure that all England hears the story of Virginia. We sail on the tide. What of Jenny Smellett? Uh, Mistress Brewster, I mean. She's gone with Tom, sir. In fact, it was all her idea. I'm not surprised. Alas, a rare spirit, that. I'm beginning to think with her in charge, they may reach the wreck after all. <laughs> You're right, sir. <laughs> There she goes. <laughs> 